Hi, my name is Raimo Matvere and I'm Head of Partnerships at the Estonian e-Residency team. As a startup founder, you probably need to tackle different challenges every day. Uh, funding, team, product, etc. Uh, it may be quite a lot to do and uh, sometimes you feel that you may need help and maybe you have already heard and thought about acceleration or incubation programs. Maybe it's worth to join some of them. Uh, and the good news is that today we are going to talk about the accelerators and incubators. We have Kadri Dammai here. She is the head of uh, Technopol Startup Incubator, which is the biggest uh, acceleration program provider here in Estonia and even in the wider region. Uh, more than 600 uh, startups have gone through the program. Those companies have raised nearly 30 million euros uh, thanks to the program. And also it is the home uh, for uh, NATO Diana acceleration program here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> but let's start with the basics. Uh, acceleration and incubation or accelerators and incubators. Are they the same thing or different? What's, what is the difference? It is actually a question uh, quite often asked. Um, I would say that uh, both do support early stage founders. So in that sense, they are similar, um, but uh, probably um, in Estonia, there's not uh, so uh, big of a difference uh, between the acceleration programs and the incubation programs. I would say the main difference is in the length of the program. Mm -hmm. So usually uh, incubators are situated next to the universities. Uh, the programs tend to be uh, a bit longer uh, than the acceleration programs. Uh, just to give you a comparison, in US usual acceleration programs uh, uh, last for uh, roughly three months. In Estonia they are up to uh, nine months, so therefore uh, no, uh, no big difference, I would say. Uh, but one of the differences definitely is uh, regarding the funding, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, incubation programs usually don't uh, provide um, equity-based uh, funding and investments. Okay, uh, but if you think of the landscape in Estonia, uh, what, what is the is the benefits of Estonian startup ecosystem. Why do you think of uh, accelerating or incubating your startup here? First of all, Estonia definitely is the, one of the best startup ecosystems in the world and uh, it's an honest truth. So you can actually establish a company here within 15 minutes. Uh, the startup ecosystem itself, it's uh, super uh, welcoming. There was uh, foreign founders as well. So the majority of the programs, the majority of the events are held in English so everyone can take part and it's super easy. Um, in most cases um, there are also options to uh, take part of the programs uh, online so it uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to relocate at least for the full time. Um, so uh, I would say if you are planning actually uh, to establish a startup company and uh, if an, a European market would be your target market we are the place to come. Mm -hmm. You already mentioned that uh uh, you don't have to be here in Estonia. I would like to specify that. So I'm a founder in, let's say, in Spain and thinking of, uh, of joining some of your programs. Maybe I have an AI startup, for example, then uh, do I have to come to Estonia at all or how, how often or do I need to relocate here to some time? Yeah, uh, programs are different and uh, actually the terms and conditions can be different as well. So we have a lot of uh, incubation and acceleration programs here in Estonia. Um, us on the Technopol side, we are pro providing different uh, kind of support towards startup founders, but we have also startup wise guys. We have a Beamline Accelerator, uh, we have Prototron Fund, uh, which uh, gives grants uh, to early stage founders in some of the programs you would need to come here physically uh, to take part of the programs but in some cases yes uh, there would be time slots where you have to be uh, here physically and um, all the mentoring sessions can be conducted via online so it depends but uh, we have a lot of flexibility within the programs so and in some of the cases you don't uh, even have to establish a company here in Estonia although this is definitely a preferred situation. Yeah, that's also what we prefer. <laughs> yes. 
anyway uh, you already mentioned some names like beamline startup wise guys what are the other main uh, main accelerators here in Estonia do you, do you think of uh, so I uh, named few um, as said uh, on the technical side uh, we have multiple acceleration programs as well uh, whether you are building a cyber tech company or an AI focused um, startup company as you mentioned in uh, your kind introduction we are also home for NATO Diana but beyond that we have health founders for example uh, supporting and super focused on the health tech startups uh, uh, so we have um, uh, a lot of different kind of um, not only acceleration and incubation programs but those kind of like co-working spaces as well so mm. if you already have a startup and not necessarily would only need an incubation support but you would like to have this kind of united community then you can come uh, whether we are providing uh, those spaces at Technopole or Lyft 99 uh, in downtown are uh, both are super convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, let's think about the process a bit. Uh, what stages uh, should the startups be uh, to apply for the acceleration or incubation programs? The entry levels um, would be different. In the majority of our programs, uh, you kind of are pre-everything, so mm -hmm. to say. Uh, what you have to have is uh, a team, of course, uh, because uh, usually we are not accepting one-man shows. Uh, you would have to have a scalable idea, because otherwise you won't be a startup company. And uh, you probably would need to showcase some kind of MVP or prototype, mm -hmm. an initial one. Uh, the product development hasn't doesn't have to be fully developed yet, uh, so we are helping you to do that. And um, regarding that phase, this is super difficult. Uh, it's kind of the first death valleys uh, for the founders, so they are struggling uh, on the financing side. So usually uh, they tend to go to their regular jobs at this time as well. This is actually allowed. So I know that in US, in the majority of the programs, you have to be fully on site. Uh, you can't basically do anything beyond the acceleration program. So our programs are a bit longer uh, and um, the plus uh, of being part of such programs is that actually you can still have a day job uh, and uh, you don't have to eat macaronis only uh, to provide for your family. So uh, we tend to be more flexible and we limit the time frame where you have to be on site and fully dedicated uh, to the program only. Mm -hmm. Regarding applying for the programs, how to become a successful applicant? What are mm. your uh, suggestions? What do you think of? The application should be rather detailed because uh, usually the application processes do allow this kind of like quite um, moderate uh, um, application stage, so to say. Um, but. Uh, if you are in more detail, uh, so if you do provide additional information regarding the stage of your company, the future plans, and super importantly, uh, about your team members, so uh, what would be uh, their strengths and capabilities. Uh, so it's basically whether you can convince us that your team can actually make it happen and implement on the ideas that you propose. So this is the core thing, because uh, if you are pre revenue, pre-traction, uh, pre-launch phase startup. So basically all we have to evaluate is whether the team can basically provide uh, and uh, implement on the ideas suggested. Okay, now I'm in the program uh, trying to develop my startup, but you know, it's not that what I thought. Like maybe the idea is not so scalable or, or uh, I kind of uh, understand that that's not the perfect team. What are your suggestions what to do then or, or how does the accelerator incubator help in, in these situations? Like First hand, uh, we recommend you to uh, actually do a founders agreement because what you mentioned that uh, whether you're not sure the, whether the team can implement and in some cases it do, does happen that uh, some of the team members who were promised to uh, have an equity in the startup and they might even already um, have an equity in the startup they are not performing and without a founders agreement probably you will end up with an argument uh, whether a founder is a good lever or a bad lever and whether they should have a stake in the company after the, uh, they left the company already 
this is one thing but uh, the other thing is that um, usually startups uh, tend to pivot a lot so they dramatically uh, change their course or pathway um, usually in the early stages uh, we uh, see that at least two times they are pivoting I would say roughly half or even more startups are pivoting one or two times this is very common and you don't uh, you don't have to be afraid of it, so to say, because it's a bit hard for founders to actually think of something else because uh, the initial idea uh, through the validation processes have shown that uh, it's not a brilliant one or not the most scalable one. So don't be afraid of uh, pivoting and definitely we are providing you with the top notch business mentors to find that brilliant X or the multiplier within the startup uh, uh, initiative. So it's not the end of the world when uh, this uh, realization takes place during the acceleration that oh, oh yeah. this doesn't work out. Yeah, it, it's not the end of the world. So you can uh, usually it tends to be in a way that you are entering with some idea. And in some cases, uh, we already starting from the very first uh, entry point, we, we do see that probably the idea or the business model needs a shift. Mm -hmm. So then we are talking with the founders, whether they uh, um, would like to get such advice uh, to shift the business model or, or to make it um, uh, a bit more scalable. And usually they tend to take the advice and uh, actually it's uh, then um, probably a way to success. Okay, but now the, the last and the most important thing is uh, money, uh, yeah. funding and investments. Uh, how does it work uh, in case of accelerators and incubators usually? Usually, uh, once uh, you are accepted to the acceleration programs, uh, the majority of the acceleration programs actually they give with the stakes as well. Mm -hmm. And to provide you with the investment, whether it's a convertible note or whether it's an actual equity investment already. Um, in Estonia, uh, the approximate sum would be around 50,000 euros uh, and it depends how much equity you should um, give uh, mm -hmm. for the money uh, but we do have a lot of grants and other possibilities as well on the Technopod side uh, just to give you an example we are welcoming startups to the Cybertech uh, acceleration programs we don't take any equity uh, but instead we give out development grants uh, up to 48,000 euros in Accelerate Estonia program uh, which is more like uh, R&D type of program uh, it's uh, from 90 up to 150k uh, in NATO Diana, uh, there are also grants uh, up to uh, basically 400,000 euros uh, and all of that money is IP and equity free. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. no IP stakes taken, no equity is taken. So okay. there are a lot of possibilities uh, what uh, founders should do. Um, it's super easy to, to go to Startup Estonia's webpage. Basically all of the support organizations and service providers are listed there. So browse through different programs and the possibilities. Uh, we are a fully digital nation, which means that everything is online. Everything is uh, super easy to find. So therefore each of the founders so should uh, find probably their um, go to place so to say mm -hmm. okay and i have uh, one last question is there any like uh, common false expectation or something you you recommend people to think of or to be aware of before uh, applying for acceleration that for example there is something uh, that startups usually expect but it does is not actually part of the program is it something that uh, yeah. you have experienced and what it is yeah there are a lot of things actually uh, but uh uh, the first would be uh, everything regarding the team. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, we can't uh, provide you with team members and it is um, not realistic that you can actually build a scalable uh, business uh, being a one-man show. So simply one person can't do all of the tasks which are needed anyhow if you are a team of three, uh, just to give you an example, uh, it still means that basically you would need to do everything but still the, um, there would be a possibility to divide the tasks and KPIs. Um, but we can't like 
provide you with additional team members this has to um, lie on you of course we can uh, uh, include you to our network we can uh, um, like ask you to be part of a different kind of events uh, where you can find team members this is one part and the other part would be definitely that you have to push yourself as well uh, to actually onboard investors so this is uh, of course we are in every way uh, we can are helping you to do that but to actually close the deal this is on you so you have to be um, on the driver's seat so to say and uh, your startup is your main responsibility and we are doing everything in our hands to empower you and to support you on your way okay great really great advice thank you Badri for uh, explaining us how does the acceleration and the incubation in general works and how what are the good uh, things in uh, uh, coming to accelerate your startup here in Estonia. Uh, we have actually special funding growth and acceleration programs page on uh, your residency website where you can go and see what kind of programs are there available in Estonia, whether uh, they could be a good fit for you or not and uh, start applying then. Thank Thanks you. for having me.